welcome to another process video. Today I'm going to be slow stitching in my slow stitch journal and I'm going to make a page and it's going to be a whimsical birdhouse for my little robin. Oh, let me pull you closer so I can show you my process. It's and slow stitching is very beginner friendly and just very relaxing really. My hexagon shaped journal is inspired by lovely Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie Brewer sent me these coasters. So the whole journal is going to be hexagon. So Got some wadding here, or you can use an old fleece blanket. It's just something to sew on. And I've already got some fairly small fabric scraps. That's just the shape it was, but I thought these look like branches. Just having a think. And this is some eco dyed fabric. That was a white sheet at one time. And yes. I've cut out a very wonky house shape. I'm just using scraps, popping some of that lovely Liberty's fabric. They're just the last pieces and, and a wonky roof. So I've pinned those and I just need to cut some more of this house fabric. Oh, look, there's a little bit more because it's going to open up so I want the birdhouse to be both sides. I'll be slow stitching this as I go. So there's the roof. So it's going to open out like that. So let's pin that. Let's get a pin. Pin that together. That's easier said than done. I can't get that pin through. I need those little clips. I'll find those in a minute. Oh, I know where they are. They're on my sewing kit to go. That's on the robin tray, look. There you go. Handy, very handy. So let's just clip that together. That's it. And the whole inspiration was was one of my little buttons. And that's the hole that the birds go through. Oh, I love that. And I've got lo lots of glorious scraps here to make like a garden for our bird. Mm. I'm thinking it through, not quite sure how it's going to work. It'll be sewn down there and open up like that. Oh, wonderful. Now I've got this darling little miniature yo-yo. That was made by my auntie Jennifer. Yo-yos are, Suff the other name for them is Suffolk Puffs and if you haven't made them before, let me just show you. Now you can, I'm going to make mine with raw edges. So it circles again, isn't it? Yes, I was, I think it was Linda I was chatting to and I said, she said, oh, have you, oh, was it Maria? No, I think it was Linda. She said, oh, have you tried Suffolk Puffs recently? And I said, oh no, because they're circles and I'm just... So enjoying working in circles. Mm. So I've just, you can knot it or I've just sewn that end in there. And then what you do, a little bit like when we make our ruffles, what you're doing is making a stitch. It, it's slow stitch, big or small, doesn't matter. Now, back in the day, people would use these and make quilts 
they, they would fold the edges over. But of course, for our slow stitching, we can We can use you gather up the fabric, you pull it like this, gather it up. This little one from Jennifer, who is a quilter, my auntie, she that's not got any more edges. It's amazingly delicate, isn't it? And then you, you just like what looks like a little sandwich bag or a little, little biscuit. Then you ruffle it up like that, and then pull it. And then you've got that lovely. I've got that lovely rough edge in the middle there. And just going round this, just uh, I'm not going all the way through. There we are. That's my Suffolk puff, and that's going to make a cute little flower. You can actually put put a button in the middle of your Suffolk puff. Actually, even oh. Big. Oh gosh, that does look nice. Hmm, okay. Let me give you a closer look of these buttons. Oh look, I see a little green heart. Oh, and it's got three holes in it. That's an unusual one. Oh. That's a very vintage colour, that mustard, isn't it? Metal ones. Oh, they're lovely. Lovely buttons. Oh, oh, a lovely purple cloth one. I wonder who, who had that on their dress. Oh, lovely. Another cloth one. Some lovely buttons, a lovely colour scheme green purples and mustards to go in our garden, our birdhouse garden. Flo, I can see that you're busy too. Oh, you've got plenty scraps. Well, help yourself to more, won't you? Yeah. Oh yes, load up all those scraps and take it through to the lounge. Ah. Oh. Oh, it really has been a joy to gently stitch, stitch in the lounge. I just with any stitch goes because slow stitching, beginners or it's beginner friendly or use any stitch that you know or just in and out if you don't know any stitches stitch the house together but I decided to make a hole because I thought that's where the bird flies through so I I cut that out carefully with my little pointy scissors so that leaves me this isn't that lovely? That's the Liberty's fabric. So I'll be able to make a nice fabric button with that piece. And I'm going to make a little yo-yo with this piece. Pull it all together. Hmm. Yes, so I'm literally just carefully putting, taking a little bit of this top here and a little bit of the button there and stitching that on 
doesn't have to be neat. Oh, if you want to make it neat, you make it neat. But I've made this pretty rough and ready. I've got, I've got ends and little scrappy bits here. Like rough and ready because like a little woodland bird box would be quite rough and ready maybe. So yeah, just stitching stitching this in and then I will turn it over and stitch this in too. Let me show you the what I've been doing on the hexagon. I've decided to turn it this way round so the page will open like this. Can you see? A wonderful mess of stitches on the back. And that looks like a branch, I thought, of a tree. And I think maybe you could call it intuitive, intuitive stitching. But really that just means having, collecting things that you like, the colour threads you like, and the buttons that you like, and the bits of fabric. And if you want to have a plan, I just sat there gently and stitched, stitched on really. Jennifer's been writing on her clipboard. Now, I'm doing hexagons. You might want to do other shapes. It could be square or rectangle, but maybe a round one. I can see myself doing a round one with some of the lovely vintage doilies I've got. So then I'm going to put this in and later on I'm going to put some nice sewn... I could put some like little hinges on here. That'd be nice. Sew some little hinges and it's going to then open up like that. Ready for our owl. No, it's our robin to come and nest inside the box. Let's see if he wants to do that. Oh yes, he's coming to perch. Yes. Oh, and I think he would like to live in there. Oh yes. <laughs> So yes, just more stitching really, gold stitches, mm. should we have a little cup of tea together? Yes, let's do that shall we, oh yes, the leftovers in the jar. All the little scripts and scraps ready for another project. Oh, thank you so much for, for joining us and spending this time with us. I do appreciate you. Oh, I have had such a gentle time with the slow stitch, adding stitch after stitch. I don't know whether one of the relaxing things about slow stitching is because the stitches are just for the look of it really because they're not necessary it's held together but you just find yourself adding so many stitches and 
just stitching up this little bird here. <laughs> he might like to come and live in the birdhouse with the robin. Mm. Oh. oh, Flo, I see you've finished your page. Oh, you've been enjoying ruffling the fabric up too. I love that satiny button. Absolutely gorgeous, Flo. I've got my cup of tea here too. Mm. Delicious. Mm. I found this little charm. I might add this too. Mm. Surely like the candle set. Oh, here it is. Mm. This is your first time here. We like the candle, just, we approach it. We're all different, aren't we? It's just a way for us to have a little bit of personal time to take a breath, to slow down, and maybe to think of others as well. I'll say goodbye and thank you for joining us. Take care, everyone. And you sat on your feet, huh? Nikki, we saved you two. Two Tim Tams yeah. and the caramel ones. <laughs> Your favourite. My favourite one. <laughs> That's Absolutely love. That really is. Now, we're going to do a taste test. Um, <laughs> we've got boring custard creams. Oh, I love custard <laughs> creams. No. We've got penguin is our equivalent. Would you like to open it up and then have a little snap? And we will... See, let's do a taste test. Why can't penguins play football? I don't know. Why can't penguins play football? Because they're snowballs. Oh, <laughs> they've got snow. Yeah, mm, yeah. There's no snowballs. Did you used to take these in your lunchbox? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did. Okay, so test the thickness. What do you want me to do? Hold them. Mm, mm. To be fair, not too far off. They're actually, no. they. No, they're not really. They're not, are they? I think the middle might be a bit more thicker. Yeah, I think the outside is a bit thicker. What you and want to do? They're, they're not individually wrapped, so they're ever oh, so yeah, easy no, to eat, aren't to eat. they? Well, snap it open and you do the taste test. Mm. Right. <laughs> that was a good snap. <laughs> Look at what is left in there. <laughs> oh, slightly greedy. Oh, we've got more, haven't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Oh, what was I not meant to eat? Or? No, of course you can eat it, darling. Oh. Sorry. So which one's the Tim Tam? Let's snap the Tim Tam. Yeah, of course you can eat it. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, this has got caramel in oh, it. Oh, caramel. So, of course, that's that. What do you think? Mm. Oh, it's a different colour biscuit, isn't it? Yeah, it looks rather stale like this one, isn't it? But actually, oh, it doesn't taste stale. the penguin? Stale. No, no, it's like paler. Look, mm, Sam. Paler. Oh. Look at the colour difference. That's Wait, a good palette of brown. That's the Tim Tam. Oh, okay. And that's the... Penguin. Mm. They're nice though. We'll taste the penguin. Have a penguin. Oh, yeah. I know. Well, Nikki, enjoy. <laughs> Your mum was just like, yeah, snappy. <laughs> I just ate it. <laughs>